Well, it's not like there's a lot going on, but on Monday, Carnival Corporation, they dropped a little bit of news, primarily that uh, last year, two of their cruise lines, they got hacked. Was your data affected? Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? This is Tony with the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Welcome back to another episode. If you enjoy cruising, consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you never miss the show. Well, yeah, so it's a dangerous world out there. You know there's a lot going on. And uh, in this connected world, in this online world, there's really no business that is immune to cyber threats. There's no business immune to being hacked. And on Monday, Carnival Corporation, they opened up the veil with an announcement saying that, yeah, we're not immune to it either. Two of their cruise lines, Princess Cruise Lines and Holland America Line, both hacked last year. Carnival announced on Monday that both Princess and Holland America both victimized by cyber attacks. Uh, Upon investigation, it was found that a significant amount of data relating to passengers and crew had been accessed. The data included email accounts, social security numbers, government identification numbers, passport numbers, health-related information, and credit card information of both guests and employees. Now, not all guests were impacted by the incident. And just to give you some idea of what we're talking about here, if you combine Princess and Holland America, it makes up about 30% of all of the Carnival Corporation cruise ships. Both Holland America and Princess said they quickly responded to the attack, shoring up security protocols and hiring a cybersecurity firm to do an investigation and to also work on strengthening the security profile of both companies. At this time, they say that none of the information that was accessed has been misused, and they are actively reaching out to customers whose data has been breached and offering free credit monitoring, free identity theft monitoring to those affected. Notably, in the Princess attack, much of the information came through email at emails targeted at employees. This is often known as a phishing attack where a deceptive email is sent to an individual and inside that email are steps, are links, or other information designed for the hacker to get a hold of the employee's personal information. This is what happened with these deceptive emails and it gave the hackers access to data deeper inside the company. Phishing attacks, which may be apropos for the cruising industry, uh, not limited to the cruising industry. This is an attack vector that hackers often use. They use a little bit of technology, they use a little bit of social engineering to try to trick the person into doing something with the email that will allow the hacker access. This is something that we all deal with. Anytime that you get an email, anytime that you get a message, you have to do a few key things. You need to verify that you know where the message came from. Legitimate companies just don't send email asking for your password or your bank account or your credit card information. Most legitimate companies do not send you an email asking you to click a link. Most of the time, you're not notified of fraudulent behavior on your account through email with a link that says click to resolve. These are all techniques that are used to try to confuse people. It's best when you get an email that that makes you question whether something's going on with your bank account or something's going on with, with anything that you do online. If it's something that makes you panic, something that makes you worried about your resources, your assets, it's not normally communicated through email that way. The best course of action, don't click anything in the email. Do not click any links reach out to the customer service of the company and resolve it through there. Let's say you do your retirement planning with Fidelity. You receive an email from Fidelity Security at abc.com saying somebody has compromised your retirement account. Click this link here, supply your password to correct the problem. Don't do it. A lot of things going on in that message. Make sure you pay attention to things like where the email came from. If it's a Fidelity security at abc.com, that's a red flag. That should be from fidelity.com, amazon.com, google.com. You're looking for those domains of the actual company in the email from address. Anything else is a red flag. Look for weird grammar or misspellings in those emails. And again, anytime the main push of the email is to get you to click a link or to provide personal information, 
that is a red flag that you might be getting hacked. Now, I beat that drum a little hard, but it is a reality in this connected world. There are bad people on the internet trying to get your information, trying to do things to you. So uh, try to shut it down the best that you can. And then the second thing is password security. It's good to change your passwords from time to time. If you're a Princess Cruiser, if you're a Holland America Cruiser and you haven't changed your password in a while, I would go and do that. My favorite password hack is to make a password that makes a sentence. Back in the day, I watched a lot of NASCAR, and so one of my very favorite passwords that I don't use anymore, so don't try to use this, is J-G-I-M-F-D-24. And I would capitalize some of those letters, and maybe I would add some other symbols, but I'm not going to go that deep into it. But basically, I took the sentence, Jeff Gordon is my favorite driver, with his driver number 24, and made a password out of it. No computer is going to hack that. It's a nonsense sentence that only means something to me that's easy to remember, but that's the way that I do it. I make up a nonsense sentence that I'm easily going to remember that's not going to be easily hacked. Try to go for eight characters. Try to add an exclamation point where you can. Try to maybe use some capitalization. All those things are going to make your password more secure, but at the same time, you got to make a password that you can remember. That's the biggest challenge. Big, long, complex password but use some sort of device like a sentence or something to help you remember it. Now, since the hacking happened last year, I assume that if you were affected, you would be notified, but it does leave us with a question for the comments. Have you had your identity stolen? Have you ever been hacked this way? What are some techniques that you use to avoid phishing scams? Uh, let's have a conversation below. Thank you so much for stopping by. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I've got another one popping up for you. Make sure you check that out. This is Tony with the La Lida Loca Crew Show, and until the next time, We'll see you on the Lido. Bye.